Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Talks with Tony. Got an email here today from a young lady and it says, hello, Tony. I'm nervous about what to do about my husband's habit of chasing a non-existent get rich quick opportunity. He quit his job to be a part of a new venture that sent us in a financial crisis. He talks to me like I can't make sense of what he's doing. He didn't consult me before he made his move and I know why. He didn't want to hear me say, I don't think it's a good idea to go full time in a project. I knew that this project had the potential to allow him to make money, but it would take time. I love him dearly and I feel he thinks I don't support him when really I'm a realist. I managed to raise children that have graduated from college, so I know how to make short money stretch. He drinks and smokes daily, multiple times a day, and he knows how I feel about it because it changes him. Drinks and smokes daily, multiple times a day. Now he's hiding his drinking as if I can't tell. I'm reading books to be a better wife and following you to find the help we need. I'm exhausted and I love who he is within, but the external influences are hurting me and growing weary. He keeps saying he's going to be better, but doesn't claim he has a drinking problem. Overall, our marriage has had so many ups and downs. Horrible things have happened. Lies. He lies when he doesn't have to. Help. I want to be a good wife, but it's hard to submit to the dysfunction. By the way, I struggle with depression and anxiety, and I'm continuing to work on my mental health. I've made some amazing progress, and I am gainfully employed and in school. I'm sorry I'm all over the place because I want to help my husband overcome challenges that he places on himself. Help. Well, hey, thank you so much for uh, trusting me, for, for, for writing me. I can say to the depression and anxiety, that's something that I can't really speak to. You know, I really recommend because you're gainfully employed to see if when you get insurance, if you can go get therapy. Um, you definitely have to do that. Another big issue in here is it sounds like he may have some sort of addiction or maybe he doesn't see it that way, to be honest with you. Um, I know some functioning alcoholics, you know, men who don't go to Alcoholics Anonymous, but drink entirely too much, in my opinion. And so a lot of men just feel like they can do it. I always tell women and people in general, men too, that when you look at your partner, you have to evaluate their morals and their values. You have to evaluate those things because love is a moral act. So in order to truly love the right way, you have to have strong morals and values. And if you don't have them, if you're lacking too many of them, your love will be out of whack. If your morals are out of whack, your love will be out of whack. So a man who drinks and smokes daily is an unstable man. He's hurting. He's lost. He's confused. He's broken. He's dying on the inside. He quit his job to chase a get rich opportunity, but he doesn't have the focus. He doesn't have the wherewithal, the mental capacity or mental ability to get rich if he's drinking and smoking as a crutch. It's crippling him. And so it's crippling him and then he's using it to hold him up. It just doesn't work. So as you said, my husband is chasing a fantasy, not a dream. And I know you got that from me because I talk about the difference between chasing a fantasy and chasing a dream. You are working on yourself and reading books and focus on your mental health. What this means I don't see in here where you mention how long y'all have been married. I do see you say y'all have had many ups and downs. 
Unfortunately, what this could mean is that you could be getting ready to come to the end of your marriage if y'all can't get some things changed really quickly. So what you have to do is you're going to have to put your foot down. You're going to have to get on Google and you're going to have to search Alcoholics Anonymous near me. You're going to have to find the, the website, the address, and you're going to have to tell him, look, I found this. You have to sign up. You got to go. I'm going to support you. I'm going to be your accountability partner. Um, they're probably going to put you with one there. But if you want to be married, if you want us to stay together, this is a non-negotiable. You have to do this. This is not, you know, negotiable. You have to do this. And so and you be the driver. You drive him to the meeting. You watch him walk in. I used to work with, you know, clients, you know, adult men who were um, developmentally disabled. Um, they, they seem high function, they seem normal, but just had something, you know, going on. And some of them were in Alcoholics Anonymous. And they didn't drive anyways, but I would drive them there, you know, drop them off, sit in the van, see them walk in, see them come out. And that's what you're going to have to do. You got to support him in that way, but you got to make sure he's getting the help. And then you're going to have to talk to him and tell him, like, look, it's unacceptable for you not to have a job. You have to have a job. And this one thing I'm going to tell y'all fellas and I'm going to tell y'all men. I mean, not and y'all women. Fellas, listen to me. Listen to your woman. Listen to her. I, my wife get on my nerves. My wife gets on my nerves. Shut, shooting down my dreams, shooting down my dreams. I, I, I mean, there's so many times I'm like, baby, hey, I want to do something. You know, I want to do this. I want to do this. And she's like, listen, baby, it's not the time. It is not the time. The time will come. This is not the time. You know, if I say I just started a company, you know, called Black Men Golfing because not a lot of black men golf. I don't golf. And so I want to have a group of, you know, black men going to golf. But before golfing, we talk to one another, we connect and we collaborate and then we play. We get some lessons, some golf lessons, then we golf. That's something I want to do to kind of have some fun, to kind of get out of the house, to have some, you know, male companionship because I don't have that. And I talked to her about it. She said, hey, that's cool. Right over here in the corner is my golf, my set of golf clubs that she bought me, you know, for um, I think it was my birthday or our anniversary. She bought me a brand new set of golf clubs. And so she supports that. But then I may throw out an idea like, hey, baby, I want to get this office space, you know, and get this big office space, get five or six coaches, start a coaching agency, also use the office space for trainings and all this. I give her this big vision. She's like, no, it's not the time. It's not the time. That office space is going to cost $5,000 a month. It's not the time because it sounds like it's a good idea. It's not. And so many ideas. Baby, I want to start a food truck. Baby, look at that Piccadilly's, that restaurant that shut down. I want to open up, you know, Gaskin's restaurant again. You know, because I had one. It failed in a year. And she said, hey, I told you. And so, fellas, understand this. Your woman is not against you. If this is your wife and you're trying to make money, guess what? She want money, too. She want money. She want to be able to be a stay home, stay at home mom. She want to be able to drive her dream car, live in her dream house. She wants money. So if she's telling you that, no, this is not the time, listen to her, hear her, listen to her because she has a wisdom. She doesn't want to divide the pot and have you dumping time, money, and resources into something that she can see because she's on the outside looking in. She can tell that it's not the time or that you don't need to quit your job. So the reason why your husband quit his job is because his drinking and smoking addiction. He quit his job because he wants the easy life. He wants to drown his sorrows in his alcohol and his weed. And that is weighing him down, is tiring him out, and he doesn't feel like waking up the next morning. You know, he's tired. He wants to keep, you know, hanging out, shooting the breeze, watching TV, and just smoking and drinking his life away. You got to step in and you got to do an intervention. 
And if he's unwilling to help himself, you got to help yourself and you got to move on. You got to let it go. And ladies, I'm going to tell you all this. Stop cradling and coddling grown men. We don't need it. We need. See, men will end up leaving a woman who is babying him for a woman who holds him accountable. I'm with my wife because she's the first woman who had her stuff together and made sure that I was going to have my stuff together. See, I had other women who want to hold me accountable. I met other women who want to hold me accountable, but they didn't have their stuff together. You know, they didn't take care of them, their lives, their body, their image, their hair. You know, they didn't take care of their grind, their business. Or they focus on one thing, but not the whole picture. When I met my wife, she was focused on the whole picture. She was focused on the whole picture. She was working 40 hours a week. She was in school to be a doctor. You know, she took care of her hair, her eyebrows, her, her skin. She shaved her legs under her arms. You know, got her nails done. She bought new outfits when she got a check. She took care of herself inside and out. She worked out, you know, fit. She took care of herself inside and out. So look, if you live in it, then you can you got somewhere to say something to me. But if you're not doing what you need to do, if you're not taking care of yourself, I don't want to hear what you're talking about. No man wants to hear what you're talking about if you're not taking care of yourself. So when I met my wife and she's holding me accountable and she wouldn't let me be a grown boy. Don't raise your voice at me. Don't tell me you're going to be home at midnight you know, from the club, um, or, or, or no, you're going to be home at midnight and then fr from your little meeting or you're hanging out with your boys and then you come home uh, five o'clock the next morning. You ain't getting in here. The door locked. You ain't coming in here. Um, don't tell me you're going to call me at 9 p.m. and then you call me 9 a.m. the next morning. I ain't picking up the phone. You ain't going to hear from me for the whole day. And when I talk to you, I'm going to tell you. That's unacceptable. So every little thing I tried to get away with, she stopped it. She shut it down. So ladies, stop babying men. If it's something that a man is doing that you know is detrimental to his health or your health or the health of the relationship, you have to put an immediate stop to it. Stop telling yourself, I'm going to let a man be a man. I'm going to let a man be a man. Oh, you got to let a man be a man. The last episode I did, the lady said her friends told her, oh, just deal with it. Let him do it. It could be worse. Guess what? Anything you let go, it's going to get worse. And fellas, young lady who sent this in, let your husband listen to this. Let your husband listen to this. At this point, normally I tell you, don't mention me. You get the knowledge you enacted on your own and leave my name out of it because men don't like to receive from other men. But in the state that your man in, my brother, let me talk to you. You let him listen to this. You just play it out loud. If you don't tell him to listen to it, he might not listen to it. You just go up to him and say, listen, I want you to hear this. Fast forward to this part. You ain't got to let him hear all the rest of it. Fast forward to this part. My brother, listen to me. You got to get your life in order. You drinking. You smoking. You quit your job. That's not where you're supposed to be. You have a real man inside of you. And one thing about being a man, and you know like I know, you got to accept full responsibility for your life. You got a dream and you got a vision, but nothing happens overnight. Nothing happens overnight. You can go on my Instagram, my Facebook. You can Google my name. You know, they try to, they got a net worth up there. They wrong, worth more than that. But you can Google me. Listen, it took me 12 years to get where I'm at. Nothing happens overnight. I had to work a job. 40 hours a week, and I balance the dream and the job. I balance the dream and the job for five years before I was able to leave that job and to go full time. And I only was able to leave the job to go full time because I had an investor who gave me what my job was paying me. He gave me that so that I could leave the job. I would have had to stay on that job longer if I had not met that investor. But when I met that investor who happened to be a friend from high school and he saw what I was doing, he saw that I had went on Oprah, 
that I had went on Tyra Banks, that I had written two or three books at that time. Um, he saw that I had over 25,000 um, people on Twitter supporting me on Twitter. He saw that I had done so much work on my own. He said, man, you're going to boom, you're going to blow. It's just a matter of time. Let me get down with you. Let me be a part of this. And so he threw some money in the pot and that helped me. I blew through the money, but he came through. Boom. I got you. Here goes some more. Here goes some more. If he would have said that first pot that I gave you, that first little bit I gave you, when I blew through that, if he would have said you done, I would have had to go back to work. But he kept supporting me. And a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people just think you can just quit your job and get into this opportunity and it's going to take off. Nothing worked like that. Nothing worked like that, my brother. Hey, get back on the horse. Get back on the horse. Get back in the race. Get your job back. Work. You got a wife to take care of. Go get some help. Go get some help. A man should never have a crutch unless you physically cripple. Unless you physically cripple, you should have no crutches. Alcohol is a crutch. You could drink socially, you know, a glass of wine a day good for your stomach. You go out on Friday night with your wife, you could have a couple of drinks. You could drink socially, but you should not be dependent on the drink. I heard a saying that say, first you take the drink, then the drink takes you. First you think you taking the drink, then the drink taking you, ruining your life. Smoking, I'm not with it. So drinking, I have me some wine, have me a little cocktail with my wife. It's social. Never getting drunk. Never getting drunk. Smoking, killing yourself. You're doing it to get a high, to get a buzz. Whether it's a cigarette, an electronic cigarette, or weed. It's a crutch. It's a crutch and it's slowly killing you. Your lungs getting blacker and you becoming more dependent. As a man, you need to be independent of all substances, of all mind altering and chemical body altering substances. If you got to stand on your own two feet, if you can't stand on your own two feet, you got to go get help until you can. My brother, get back in the game. Love yourself. Work on yourself. Do what you got to do to save your marriage and to save your life. Get your character in order. When I got my character in order, that's when my life changed. That's when I was able to earn millions of dollars in my business, when I got my life in order. If your character is in order, you're going to be able to make any amount of money you want to make. If your character is out of order, no amount of money will buy character and no amount of money will solve your problems if your character is out of order. Hey, that's my message to you, to all my brothers out there. Stay in the game. Accept full responsibility for your life. Do what you got to do as a man. To the ladies, you got a man in your life and he needs to hear this, whether it's your brother or your son. Fast forward to this part. Sit with him. Let him hear it. Work on your character, my brother. Work on your inside as a man. Accept responsibility for your life. Love your life and live the best life you can live. And it has nothing to do with the club, with drinking with smoking. Thank you for submitting your question. If you have a question for me, make sure you send it to inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Thank you to all of my patrons who supported me on Patreon. Hey, it means the world to have your support. Because of you, I'm able to deliver this content consistently. So go on my YouTube, check the link in the description, patreon.com forward slash Tony Gaskins. I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon.